made me hold the ladder. Jesus. Well, hello, Canadian Campaholic here coming to you on an absolutely glorious and gorgeous April day. Uh, it has been extremely, extremely warm this week. Temperatures getting up almost into the 30s Celsius, which has got to be high 80s Fahrenheit. Very unusual for this time of year, but it's really got me in the mood to start getting our camper ready for the 2023 camping season. We've already got some trips booked in May. Um, I moved it off of the yard uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, it's back on the driveway, but now it's time to do a little bit of spring maintenance. Now the list that follows is not gonna be an exhaustive list with full comprehensive instructions. That video could take hours, but I just wanna give you uh, kind of a top five to 10 list of items that you should be looking at and checking as part of your uh, spring maintenance program. So ideally over the course of the winter months, you should have been checking inside the rig from time to time. Um, you should have put uh, either a, a, a damp rid or a damp check inside the uh, camper to keep the moisture down. I've got several videos on the channel that talk about that. It's a real mess in here at the moment. I apologize. I've got to do a good clean. So I guess that is something you should be doing in the spring is, is going through the cupboards and organizing and cleaning up and vacuuming and mopping the floors and uh, just getting everything clean and tidy for your first trip. But before you get into any of that, the first thing you should do when you walk into this is take a deep breath. If you've had leaks over the course of the winter and you've got issues with leaks, especially in a camper like this with wood frame construction, you're going to smell something pretty quickly to indicate that there's a, a musty odor to indicate that you've had water ingress. It's a very good idea, of course, to look at the ceiling, look at the Luon board in the ceiling to look for any bubbling, any warping, any obvious signs that water has got in. But don't always just look up. Look at the floor as well. Look for any signs of water pooling on the floor. Go up into the cupboards. And again, run your fingers up across that Luon board at the back for any obvious signs of bubbling or warping. If you feel a lot of heat coming out of a cupboard space, that's usually an indication there could be mold problems in the wall or in the cupboard. You know, give it a good sniff. Also, while you're in here, uh, keep an eye out for our good friends, well, enemies, mice. There will be uh, little mice turds and things of that nature in the cupboards. Uh, nope, that's just a piece of pepper. Um, but check throughout the cupboards. Um, if you can, pull off your access panels around your water heater, your furnace, your water pump uh, to see if there's any signs of rodents. Um, I have a great video on the channel that talks about uh, ways that you can try to prevent mice from getting in. But not every solution is foolproof and guaranteed to work. Sometimes mice will just get in. So you want to be inspecting um, any access panels where you can get to your wiring, um, if you've got storage under your dinettes, for example, check everywhere, especially if you've left blankets, mattresses, or any fabric materials in here, they love to make nests. So look for mice. Um, it's also a good idea, you know, check the electrical system. If you can hook it into 110 power, make sure that all your appliances are, are working. Um, you could potentially get an expert to test your gas system do a pressure test and check for leaks. That's always a good idea as well. Um, and then also you're gonna want to dewinterize your plumbing. So uh, let's talk a little bit about dewinterizing plumbing. I think we'll detail this in a, a separate video, um, but you should be sanitizing your fresh water system on board as part of the dewinterization process. So in the fall, uh, especially if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you would have winterized your plumbing to make sure that it didn't split. And you would have used RV antifreeze, which is non-toxic and safe for freshwater systems. Again, much like the awning situation, um, there are a lot of homemade uh, remedies that you can, not remedies, but solutions that you can use to sanitize your freshwater system. And bleach is usually a core component of that. I've had great success using uh, Taste Pure Spring Fresh, again, Camco product, not sponsored by Camco, but this is a solution that you add to the freshwater holding tank. It's a pretty involved process because it does require you to fill the tank and flush it three or four times, which 40 gallon holding tank on our camper and even with the pressure from the water in the house, that takes a while to do. 
But the reason that I like to do this is that no matter how well you flush the system, um, first of all, you're not necessarily going to get rid of any mold or bacteria or something that might be in the plumbing system. But secondly, getting rid of the taste of the antifreeze takes a long time. It has this weird sickly flavor. Um, it won't make you sick or anything like that. It's just a minor residue, but it's not, not pleasant. Using the Taste Pure Spring Fresh product, the water is as clean and as fresh as what we have in the house. We don't have a filtration system on our freshwater plumbing in here, so using something like Spring Fresh is, is great. You don't have to use a commercialized mix like this. Again, if you Google it, there's all kinds of other ways to mix a solution to sanitize. And as I said, I think we'll detail that in a, uh, a separate video. You also want to very carefully get on a ladder and come up and inspect the roof of your camper. Now, I'd actually recommend not using an extension ladder like this one. It puts a lot of pressure on the, uh, the ridge of your camper. Especially don't want to be putting it on your awning tube because you could dent that. You don't want to be putting it on the thin gutters because you could dent that. Even here at the back of the camper where it's like a plasticky, rubberized... Uh, connection I guess you would say or edging um, it could damage it so really recommend that you invest in a good eight foot or ten foot is even better um, step ladder that way you're not putting any pressure on the roof but what you want to look for while you're up here is the die core lap sealant um, you want to be using a self leveling lap sealant die core is uh, I think that's the brand name but it's absolutely the best and you want to look for anywhere where the sealant is cracking or splitting or lifting away from the surface around your roof vents, um, around the vent above your fridge, around your um, vents for your bathroom, your antennas, basically anywhere where there's sealant up here. Always a good idea as well to use a little bit of mineral spirits to clean up the existing sealant if you're just going to gob some extra stuff over the top. If you've used a lot over the years and it uh, is in really rough shape, you may actually have to scrape that lap sealant off and start fresh. Uh, other little tip I'll give you, uh, speaking of your roof, is of course to clean the roof. Now there are commercial products on the market that you can use for this, but honestly I've had the best of luck with just regular Dawn dish detergent. Uh, I've got a big uh, telescoping Simonized brush that's got nice soft bristles designed for washing cars, and I just get up here, soak it down. Um, Use a bucket of soapy water with the Dawn dish detergent in it and just give it a good scrub and it has kept the roof uh, pretty darn clean. Ideally, your rubber roof should be fairly pale in color, almost white in some cases. If it's a very dark gray or even worse, green, that means it's definitely dirty and it needs a good cleaning. Now, when we talk about seals, it's not just roof seals that you need to concern yourself with. It's also a good idea on a regular basis to look around the rest of your rig for any other seals uh, that are there. So for example, I've got silicone around the wheel arch here. Uh, I've got it around all the windows. I've got it down these back cap seams, um, around the window here. I've got it around the storage compartment. Also because this is a stick and tin and it's corrugated aluminum, you've got a seal all the way down here and up the front. Um, you want to be checking all of that for splitting and cracking and make sure that you clean it up and then apply some nice fresh silicone. That way you're preventing any uh, water ingress getting into the camper. Really good idea to do this uh, in the spring uh, and again in the fall. Um, you could do it every 90 days, but usually at least twice a season uh, works well for us. Another top tip is once you've got your battery uh, reinstalled, and we're not going to show you how to do that today. We've got that in another video. Uh, it's a good idea to roll out your awning. Not only to make sure that it's working properly, but also to inspect it for damage. And just as importantly, watch your head, Ramey. Look for how dirty it is. You can see this awning is pretty filthy. Um, I don't typically clean the upper side of the awning. I mostly focus on the back side of the awning. Uh, there's lots of different ways to do this. A lot of folks will mix their own cleaning solution. Um, it seems to vary in strength depending on what website you look at, but it's usually a mixture of uh, bleach, water, dish detergent, and, and baking soda. Um, I personally use uh, Camco's RV awning cleaner. I'm not sponsored by Camco, but uh, we've had pretty good luck with this product. It's not uh, 
super, super corrosive, although it does have a corrosive logo on it. Um, and you dilute this in a bucket of water. And what I use is a, again, a big uh, telescoping brush on a pole and I spray down the awning. I scrub it with this strong cleaning mixture. And then what I do, and you could do this even with your homemade mixture, is roll the awning back in. And what that does is it applies the cleaning mixture to the entire awning fabric and leave it rolled up for half an hour or an hour or so. Um, you don't want to dry it out completely, and it typically won't dry that quickly if it's rolled up. And then open up the awning again, give it a good rinse, and if you need to, repeat the procedure. Roll it, I get it all soaked down, scrub it again, roll it back in, leave it rolled up to allow that product to really soak in. Um, and again, I know that there's mixed reviews on this product, but it's worked fairly well for us. But as you can see, yeah, that awning is pretty dirty, so it's gonna need to clean. It's also a good idea at this point, if you can, to wash your rig. Um, before you start actually cleaning it, one of the first things that you want to do is get rid of black streaks. So you can just about make it out here. Anywhere that you've got uh, rubberized seals around windows and air conditioners, you'll get these black streak marks that come down from the windows and they're, they're pretty ugly. Um, I use Camco's black streak remover. Um, and you just basically spray that on in a concentrated form. Use a gentle sponge to, to scrub it off. The key is you don't want to let it dry on there. You want to rinse it as soon as you possibly can. Once you get all the black streaks off, I like to rinse down the entire rig and then I use Camco's uh, wash and wax cleaner. Again, this is a stick and tin camper, so it's aluminum sided. Uh, make sure whatever cleaning product you're using is rated for what the camper's made out of. So some campers are fiberglass, um, in this case it's aluminum. Just make sure whatever the cleaning products are that you're using, that they are rated for the material uh, that your camper's made out of. In terms of how often you clean your rig, it's really up to you. I would say minimum twice a season, once in the, the spring and then once in the late summer, but that's really up to you and depending on you know how often you're traveling and how dirty it gets. Ideally, over the winter months, you should have covered the exterior of your tires, either with a big piece of uh, plywood or chipboard or even better, a tire cover if you can get one. The reason being that when your camper sits out in the sun all winter long, the UV light is going to degrade the rubber uh, in those tires. Typically, tires on a camper are only going to last about four or five years. They'll wear out long before the tread is worn out, and it's because of the aging of the rubber. So in the spring, uh, obviously, you want to check your pressures. So if you come down here to the front of the rig, um, it'll tell you your tire sizes. There's usually a label somewhere. It may be in your owner's manual, but this one you can see that the cold tire and pressure, cold tire pressure inflation is 50 psi for each tire. So check the tire pressure. Obviously, you want to check the tread of the tire, but it's on most campers, it's unlikely the tread's going to wear out. What you want to look for is on the side walls. You want to look for any cracking. This is called weather checking. It'll look a little bit like. Uh, if a muddy puddle dries out and the mud starts to crack. And you'll usually notice it around the lettering um, and around any of the sort of seams from where the tire was molded. Uh, we bought a set of tires. I've got a previous video on the channel about this. They were uh, cheap Chinese tires. I'm just gonna say it because that's where they came from. Um, and within literally about three years, we had a lot of weather checking and cracking on the sidewalls. Uh, we replaced these two years ago, I think now, with Lodestar tires. Um, a lot of people really like, um, I think it's uh, Michelin tires and Goodyear tires. Those are very good as well, but Lodestar, we've, uh, we've had a lot of luck with these so far. But yeah, just check the condition of the tires, make sure that the pressure is good. Um, and yeah, that should be it for tires. Something else that I guess I should mention is about your brakes and your bearings. Um, depending on the make and model of your camper, um, the brakes should be inspected every year. Uh, the brake system on this particular camper um, has something called like a never adjust system where the shoes move every time you brake to try and make them wear more evenly. But the manufacturer's specifications say they get them serviced every two years. Uh, bearings, you, you again, there's different schools of thought there. Some people will say get your bearings checked or, or repacked every year. Some will say every two years. Uh, this has the buddy uh, bearing system in it where you should be able to jack up the camper, put a grease gun on there, rotate the wheel, and then uh, add new grease into it. Uh, there's mixed opinions on that one because some will say the rear seal can fail and doesn't pack them properly, blah, 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 blah. I personally, 
any time that I've had the, uh, the bearings serviced or I've had the uh, brakes inspected, I get it done professionally. I just take it to an RV dealer and let them deal with it. They're the experts. Uh, it doesn't cost a huge amount of money. It's just a little tricky because this time of year they're very, very busy. So I usually try to do it in the fall. Uh, didn't get it done last year because we hardly did any camping in this camper at all last year. Not really a good excuse, but um, it is a priority item for this year. Uh, another little thing that you want to make sure you do is uh, make sure that you take out your anode rod, your drain plug, if you have one. If you have a suburban hot water heater, that's definitely the case. Uh, you want to double check the condition of the rod. I'm not going to take it out right now, but to make sure that uh, you've got enough meat on there to still have it be useful. Um, and then wrap a little bit more fresh Teflon tape around the threads um, and put that uh, drain plug back in there. That way, when you're ready to go on your first camping trip, you can fill this uh, sucker up and you'll be good to go. Uh, there are options to descale the inside of the tank. I've got another video on the channel that uh, we used a wand to rinse out the system in the fall, so I don't really have to worry about that right now. Um, also have a video on the channel of troubleshooting some of these water heaters if they fail to work. This one had an issue a few years ago and we fixed it, but yes, definitely want to make sure that your hot water heater and your anode rod or drain plug are all ready to go. Well, folks, uh, that'll about do it for this video. Again, not an exhaustive list of every single thing that you need to do on your trailer, but a pretty good starting point. The amazing thing about the internet and YouTube and forums, Facebook groups and so on, is that you can find detailed instructions on just about anything related to uh, campers and, and RVs. So uh, even though I've just sort of touched on these concepts today, do a little bit of digging, you'll find some really great instructional videos um, out there. As we perform some of these tasks uh, this season, maybe we'll elaborate on those and post them to the channel. Uh, but that'll do it for now. Happy camping. We'll talk to you later.